Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can make T-section pipes in Blender. So this was requested by Ethan on the video of creating handles and pipes that I've done previously as a short. Now, we're going to actually do this in two bits. I'm going to talk you through the ideal situation of making a T-section pipe, which is going to be relatively easy to do. There's just a couple of little tricks to it. And you can find other videos on this doing the same thing as well, so there's nothing breaking the wheel about that. But the other thing I want to do is talk about this in a real world situation where you might be adding a T-section to a pipe as opposed to just making it as a separate object or piece by itself. And when you do that, there's a few other tricks that we need to apply. So let's start going with this. So we'll do Shift A, Mesh, and then we're going to bring in a circle. As always, bottom right hand corner for all of the key presses that I do. We'll open this up and 32 vertices should be fine. Let's go into any mode, say edge mode, and then we'll just E and then Z to extrude that down a distance, somewhere about there. Then what we're going to do is we're going to get this into a 45 degree angle. So we want a 45 degree angle about there, and then we'll mirror this to the top section. So what I'm going to do is in X-ray mode, so Shift and Z, I'm going to select all of those edges, and we want to use a tool called the Shear Tool. Now the shear tool is really, really fun. If I actually just select all of those, we can do great things like that. So we can do that really, really easily. In fact, we could just do it this way and then mirror it like that, and it will sort of have the correct function. But we'll do this a bit more properly, solving some issues along the way. So the shear tool allows us to bend a pipe without using R, which will affect the geometry. But there's a problem. If we only want to do it to, let's come back and select, our edges here, and we then go back to our shear tool again, it is not going to be doing it correctly because it does it in the middle. So we're gonna to come to the top and change our transform pivot point, which is normally here, to our 3D cursor, which is centered where our pipe was. Then we're just gonna to drag to somewhere about 45 degrees. We don't really care that much. And then again, on this box, click here if it's not open. We're gonna put that as minus one, and minus one is perfectly 45 degrees. Once we've got that done, we can mirror this either by using hard ops, so Alt and X and then mirror there, or we can just come into our modifiers, add modifier, and we want a mirror, and then we want that on the Z, not on the X, and then we're good to go. Apply this, and then we've got all of this ready, and we can just E, and then this is in the Y axis, so let's hit Y to extrude that out, and then with all of these ones at the end selected, they should already be selected after extrusion. We're just gonna scale these, but we need to change this from not working off the 3D cursor to, I don't know, the median point will be fine. S, Y, zero, and we've got our T-section pipe. Now, at the moment, we just need to add on some extra bits because we're probably going to want to add on a subdivision surface by hitting something like Control and two to add that on as modifier, but then this gets very ugly. So what we're gonna do is add on some bounding loops to control this slightly. Several ways of doing this. The common way is to control an R, and then we can just drag it over here. Do not do this. I mean, you can, but you're not doing it right. If you'll notice, this moves so that we've got it perfectly at this 45 degree angle here, but then perfectly flat here. And that means that however close we get to here, I'm just gonna do it here to slightly more exaggerate it, this distance, is shorter than that distance. So don't do that, it's gonna look horrible. What you want to do instead, if you want to do it that way, is Control and R, click, and then you're gonna press E to make it even. And now it is exactly at that 45 degree. If it's the wrong way, for example, it's flat, you just hit F to flip. And effectively this tells it to look at either the right side or the left side each time you flip it over. So right side, left side, to know what geometry to use. Then we're gonna to come to about here, and then we do exactly the same thing, Control and R, E, and then the same thing here, and then Control and R, click, E, and then the same thing here. And then that means that when I press Control and two, we get a really nice, smooth transition for our pipe. The other way we can do this, if we just undo that in edge mode, is just press Alt and click, and then Shift Alt and Shift Alt, and then we can press Control and B, create a bevel, and then we want to scroll up so we've got two segments, and then we can go somewhere there. You'll notice that's made nice quad topology for each of these points, so everything's, or all these faces, are made up of quads, and then we can once again control and two, and it looks really nice. So that's really good for our T-section pipe. 
And if we wanted to, we could add some bits on the end here as well. So let's just go into edge mode, control and R, and again, E and then F, somewhere there. And then we'll do the same thing here, control and R, click E, F, and then somewhere there. And then we want to go into face mode, select all those faces, select all those faces, and then Alt and E, or we can extrude faces along normals. And then once again, we've got a similar problem. Let's turn that off for now. Go into edge mode, Alt select that edge, Shift Alt select that edge, and then actually let's do there, there, and there, and there. And I'm just gonna press Shift and E, drag to the side, and that'll put up our crease. And now we can just mirror this to the bottom. So I'm gonna use Alt and X to mirror it downwards, bring back our subdivision surface. So we've got our nice T-section pipe. Now this is all well and good for modeling something that is a standalone object, but this doesn't always work as perfectly in a real world situation or a real world modeling situation, because a lot of the time you're not gonna to want to just bring this in and Boolean it to the other object. You're gonna have a series of pipes that you want to add just the T-section to. So let's make a series of pipes and we'll have a look at why this could not be perfect and how we'd solve it. So I'm gonna shift A, mesh, and bring in a plane uh, if you haven't seen this before, this might feel weird that I'm using a plane, but stick with it for a second. Let's just S to scale that up, Control and A, and then apply the scale. And what I'm going to be doing is making like a S section of pipe. And I'm going to go to edge mode, click, shift click, Control and E, and then we're going to subdivide vertex mode, select that vertex and that vertex X, and then dissolve those vertices. We could have done that another way with just a single vertex and extruding out, but either way. But this is a really nice way to make pipe or handles because it's very easy just to change things around. I can come to this vertex here and then just E and then Y and then I've got more pipe. Or we could steal some lines or edges off another piece of geometry to make the pipe really quickly. So this is really cool for pipe making. It's my preferred method most of the time. I don't like dealing with Bezier curves and things like that in Blender, I find it a pain. So we're gonna select these vertices here and we're going to curve them round because otherwise it doesn't look quite right for pipe. So control shift and B is our beveling for vertices and I'm just going to scroll up so I've got eight segments you can see that in the top left hand corner and to a size where they look about right. Let's go to about there. With that sorted I'm going to go back into object mode and we're going to convert this into our pipe. So to do that right click convert to and then curve and what that gives us access to here is a curve object data properties. And I can come down to geometry and then go to our bevel and we can add some depth to our bevel. So I can do something like this. I can also change that resolution. Let's go to about eight, just to be a bit smoother. And we've got our pipe. I'm gonna go to, let's say about there, whatever. And if we want to, we can control and two, so we can make this nice and smooth. I'm just gonna get rid of that for now. We'll come back to that later. Anyway, this is really good for our pipe. It's a really nice start to it. If we want to, we can also come to the bevel and add a fill cap. Then when we do that, if I convert that to a mesh, we do have a slight problem that we've got some overlapping vertices that are not really connected. If we have a look here, there's actually two vertices on top of each other and we've got to merge those all together. So we just select those M and then merge by distance if we want to sort that out. But either way, we've converted this to our mesh and we want to add our T section in here. So we'll start with adding in an edge loop. So control and R and we'll put that somewhere here. Now we can already see that we've got a problem here because this is actually at an angle. It's not perfectly straight. And this is caused by the fact that this is not perfectly straight and neither is this one. So we're actually gonna solve that by just pressing K and using the knife tool. And the knife tool is gonna to be really helpful in this problem solving. So I'm gonna click and then I want to click on the X to keep it perfectly in the X axis. And then I want C so it's gonna cut through, click, space, and you can see it's cut all the way through. If I hadn't pressed C, so that's just K, cross and then X again. And then without pressing C, I click and then space, it only goes through half. We need to go through the whole thing. So if you haven't used the knife tool much before, C is a really important tool. So X, C, click, and then space. And we've now got this perfectly horizontal, or at least on that X axis. I'm gonna have my T section coming from the top. So we're gonna want to go this way. Now at this point, how are we gonna do this? I mean, we could start deleting out faces, 
but the whole mirroring isn't going to work because this pipe isn't going to be mirrored correctly. Like if I mirror it across this, then we're going to lose the angles that we've got. So we don't want to be using the mirror tool. And we also can't really use the shear tool because, well, I guess we can use the shear tool actually, but we're going to have to start deleting sections and things like that. So instead, what we're just going to use is to just use the knife tool. So I'm going to press K to bring up my knife and I'm going to click on my middle vertex and then we're going to drag out and then I'm going to press A. And that locks us to 15 degree increments. So we've got here, 0, 15, 30, 45, and 45 is what we want. Once again, C to cut through, click, space, and we've got that there. And then we're going to K again, click, A, lock into 15 degree increments, C, click, space, and we've got this cut through. And this is going to become our pipe, just like we had before. So what we're going to do is go into face mode, X and delete the faces and then we're going to go into edge mode alt select the series of edges there and then we're just going to E to extrude that up Z to keep it straight and then S Z zero and we've got that sorted so this is our t-section pipe now and then we're going to go into edge mode and once again I'm going to nice and neatly add in this offset and actually I'm going to press alt and 4 to use an add-on called Ensolve, which I've talked about recently. It's really cool for a lot of different cleanup functions and other things like that. I'm just going to use the offset function from this as it just does it a little bit more neatly as it means I don't have to use a bevel and then ruin my bevel for later. This actually has a perfect, if you'll notice, profile of one here. Whereas if I was to control and B, and even if I scroll down to two, it doesn't have a perfect profile and then I have to start fiddling around with this menu here, which you can do. It's just annoying and I don't want to. So we'll just do that here with that and then control and two and we've got our section. Oh, let's just select there. Shift select there, shift and E to bridge that. And I also need to A, M and merge by distance to fix those ones on the edge. Oops, and that's going to mean that I need to do that edge again. There we go. So here we've got our T-section pipe join that was going to work in a more practical and realistic modelling situation than that first example, though that first example is perfectly legit as a way of doing it. I just don't think it's always going to be the easiest. So hopefully, Ethan, you found that helpful. You mentioned should you just build in two different cylinders together, and while you can do that, I actually find that a little bit of a pain, and this is generally a better method. If you did find this useful and you thought it's worthy, please do hit the like button. It's really appreciated as it means other people who are interested are going to find the video. And if you're not subscribed, subscribe for more Blender content. Have a great day, guys.